With us today from Midland, Michigan, is Rahif Al-Turkmani. Rahif hails from the currently war-ravaged country of Syria. This husband and father of one joins us to share his personal story and to help us understand worldwide migration and why we should aspire to be that safe harbor amid global storms. Before we welcome Rahif, allow me a bit of background to the conversation. At present, the country of Syria is experiencing a humanitarian crisis of epic proportions. The military hostilities have caused over 500,000 deaths, including tens of thousands due to lack of medical care. To date, 11 million Syrians have been displaced by this conflict. Rahif Al-Turkmani is here to tell us his family story. Rahif, welcome to Feel Like You Belong. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. So tell us a little bit about your own motivations for coming to the United States. Absolutely. So I, I came here mainly to advance my education. I came here back in early 2011. I uh, got my MBA in 2012. And then I worked at the University of West Virginia University, University which I still have connections over there. And I'm teaching online classes over there as Go well. Go Mountaineers. Go Mountaineers. Uh, and then I got another master's degree in uh, human resources and industrial relations. And based on that, I started working for the Dow Chemical Company in the human resources field, which I really enjoy. Good. And earlier when we were talking, you were telling me that your family has a history of education. Talk That's about that. That's correct. So my, my great-grandfather actually established a school back in 1920s, I believe, or 1930s. And schools were not very, very popular back then. Uh, people would go to uh, the mosque to get education. But yeah. he in, in, uh, established this school. And then um, this went to, to my other family members. So I have my father, who, is, who used to be a teacher and then became a, a professor at uh, the university. Uh, my mother uh, used to be a teacher. My aunt, uh, my two aunts were uh, school principals. Uh, my two uncles are teachers, so I, I think teaching is in my genes. That's why I, I wanted to keep this passion of uh, teaching beside my day-to-day -day job. Uh, I teach at Northwood University in uh, Midland. I teach organizational behavior, and next semester I think I will be teaching human resources, which is something I hope I know a little bit uh, about. Uh, so it's, uh, it's in, in my blood, the love of teaching, and I feel it's very rewarding uh, to share the knowledge and to help someone gain knowledge. Sure. And what really strikes me in this whole conversation is you have a full-time job. I you, do. You are already very busy, you know, working at the Dow Chemical Company, and you have a relatively new baby at yes. your house, which is crazy-making enough, but you said, no, I really need to follow my family's legacy and I need to teach. How are you doing all of that? Um, I think I manage my time well and i get support from from my family they always encourage me to do that i get support from my wife who uh, when i ask her like should i go for this she said yes we can we can handle it we can manage it and uh, so far so good uh, i got very good feedback from students uh, because i started teaching again uh, back uh, last year so it was uh, I stopped for about three years and then I felt that I'm missing something. So I mm -hmm. really wanted to go back and I started communicating with Northwood and they, they were happy to have me back then and I hope they will still be happy to have me in the future. Sure. So clearly your, your family legacy lives on. It, I, uh, absolutely. And I, every time I had a good experience in class or good, good feedback from students, I would put it on my, my family WhatsApp group and let them know that you know this is what I received today or something like that they they really appreciate that so when you're doing your teaching in Midland that's a local class but teaching in Morgantown that's hundreds yes. of miles away uh, so talk I, about distance teaching it's it's definitely challenging when you don't have this face-to-face -face interaction with the students but due to technology you have more uh, you're more able to actually contact with with people and and try to make it as engaging as possible. So through discussion boards, through uh, videos, it, it makes it um, a little bit uh, easier, but it's definitely challenging for the professor and also for the students as well. Uh, but the students um, 
have been doing well and uh, I did not um, I'm not teaching this semester but hopefully will teach next semester because West Virginia University uh, is near and dear to my heart and I, I feel that th I owe them this uh, what I'm doing uh, I owe them my success with the degrees that I got and uh, the great uh, welcoming that I got from from uh, my professors my bosses over there because I worked and taught when I was in West Virginia so how long did you live in Morgantown I lived uh, for about four years and I still have family members over there I still oh have God. friends I still visit there um, every now and then I would go there and, and see my friends and family over there fantastic yeah and you also <coughs> need to give a big shout out in your personal and professional development to your mom talk about your mom um, she's one of the s sweetest ladies that you can uh, you can meet uh, I owe everything to her and uh, I think my my brothers and my siblings and even my nieces and nephews uh, share the same the same uh, uh, opinion because she helped us not only uh, back home when we when my father died I was 15 years old when my father died and um, we, we had a very good income it was not like high income but it was decent income but when my father died things changed uh, a lot and uh, my brother who was going to who started applying for coming here to the United States and get his uh, master, masters and PhD he decided to stop everything and start working to support the family but my mother said no you should pursue your your goal of going to the US and getting the, the education that y you want so she actually sold her uh, house that she paid for over 25 years and once she uh, got it my my father passed away and uh, she decided to sell the house give the money to my brother and then support him to come to the United States now when my brother came here he worked very very hard to fund himself and uh, get very good grades so he can uh, so he actually received uh, a lot of uh, scholarships so it, it helped a lot so my f my brother when he came here back in 2001 uh, supported my other brother uh, to come to the United States as well uh, back in 2006 and then they both supported me and I'm not talking only about the financial support it's the encouragement mm -hmm. the, the the motivation and I still remember when I uh, when I was done with the, my uh, high school and got the the grades because over there it's a little bit different from here depending on how many grades or points you get in your final high school exam it will let you go to the profession uh, unlike here where you can study you know whatever you want basically uh, so I, I, when I was admitted to the uh, College of Economics over there, on the same day my brother called me, and that was back in 2001. My brother called me and he congratulated me and he said, once you graduate, you should come here and get your MBA. I, I thought he said NBA. <laughs> actually MBA. I didn't even <laughs> hear about it. So I don't play basketball. <laughs> yeah. Well, I do play basketball. Oh. Yes. Oh, okay. I, I was in the uh, Al Karama Sports Club back back home oh, okay. uh, for about seven years. But guard that's forward. Uh, I was forward, and I still play actually with my Dow colleagues. We go every every. Ev they go every week. I don't go every week, unfortunately. But hopefully, we'll participate more. But that's a different story. Uh, so when, when I uh, got this phone call from my brother, 2001, fast forward 10 years, I'm in the United States pursuing my, my MBA degree. So, and he was, both him and my brother, they were all, uh, they were supportive all the way. Of course, my mother was the main supporter. And uh, until this day, she's here in the United States. We are blessed to have her here. She's still helping my me, my brother, my brother, my sister with you know raising the kids and uh, especially in the past two years she was supporting my brother because he was he got his, ma his master's and PhD but it was not enough for him he decided to get a fellowship in in a new field of science it's called molecular genetics okay I don't know what exactly that means but it it's it's related to genetics and uh, how they predict uh, future cancer based on the genetics so he decided to do this fellowship uh, and drive for about two hours and a half, three, three times a week 
so he was away from home a lot of time. So my mother said, you know, I'm going to stay with, uh, with his wife and two kids just to provide this support. So until this day, we all feel that we, we all, my, my mother, um, all the success that we have right now, me and my brothers, it's uh, due to uh, the support of my mother. Thanks to a really strong woman who would not settle, who said, no, you have more striving yeah. to do. And she did the same thing with my brother, and she did the same thing with me. I was working in Saudi, and I'm, I was making very good money over there because you don't pay taxes in Saudi. Oh I my. don't know if you know that. I didn't. Yeah, so, uh, but as an American, you sh still have to pay taxes back home. Back but home. back then, I didn't, I didn't pay taxes. I was making good money. She was actually the one who managed my finance, uh, uh, like the, the for the funding and the for my education, she was always telling me like, send me some money so I can save it for you and save it for you. And after three years, I got enough money so I can actually come and pay uh, for my my education, which is not cheap, as you can yeah, as yeah. you know. So she was basically your investment counselor. Your she was, yeah. she was. Yeah. Although she didn't have a degree in finance, but uh, she has this sense of of mother that knows what should be done. Watching out, wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Um, you also mentioned in our previous conversation your two nieces. Tell me about them. Yes, I am very <coughs> proud of them. They are both, they recently uh, got the, the white coat ceremony uh, in dental school and I can call them doctors right now. They came here when they were 10th grade and 11th grade uh, with their father, father mother and uh, two younger sisters. And they faced all types of challenges, being foreigners, being uh, Muslims, being uh, wearing hijab. They actually decided to wear hijab in the United States, which was very um, brave thing to do. Because not everyone is kind in public. That's, uh, th that's correct. Now, on the, it's a spectrum. So you see people who are not very kind, but you see people who are overly kind and very, very kind, and they would make you feel uh, like you belong. They would welcome you. They would uh, make everything that they can do to make you feel like you belong. Wonderful. Yeah, Wonderful. so they, they uh, successfully got through high school and, and college and dental school. And I, I, I hope and I think that they will be great, great uh, mm -hmm. dentists in the mm -hmm. future. Yeah. So I want to switch topics uh, because you work for a very progressive company, Dow Chemical, mm -hmm. and they're doing really great things with their... Uh, employee resource groups. Yes. And you are very heavily connected to the MENA group. Tell yes. us about MENA. MENA is a Middle East and North Africa employee resource group. Um, it's a group of people who have either uh, MENA descent, like myself, or they have interest in MENA region. They like the region, they like the food, they like the music. Or maybe they're working there or have some of them weekly conference there. calls there. Correct. And some of them actually work there for, for about three, four years and came back and they wanted to stay connected with the region. Some, uh, some of them, of the participants of the group, they just want to learn more about it because DAO has a good presence over there. They have uh, uh, big projects going on over there. So they may prepare themselves for if they decide to go there and, and work for DAO in, in the region. So what is the purpose of an ERG? The purpose of ERG is basically a few things. One, to make people of that descent or, or that group feel that they belong. They share their background uh, with other people like them. Like so a support system then? It's Yes, so that's one aspect of it. It also, we wanted them to be resources. So resources for the company and resources for the employee. Uh, many of the ERGs have uh, mentorship programs, employee development programs, networking opportunities, um, and it's uh, we are trying to add business value in addition to the socialization aspect and networking aspect of it. So that's um, these are a few purposes of the ERG. Fantastic. Yeah, and we have ten of them. So, and you can join anyone. If even uh, you know, I, I joined Mina because I have a Mina descent, but I'm also uh, with the. The uh, WIN, which is uh, Women Innovation Network, because they do have uh, activities and events for men and, and women, just like sure, we do sure. for people 
not necessarily from from MENA region. And if men go to those uh, meetings and don't try to take over, they might learn something. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I agree because it's uh, it's uh, a wild it's uh, it's a global um, issue the the gender equi uh, equality and sure. all that stuff. Sure. So yeah, yeah. We have to wrap up in just a moment, but <sighs> I want to look at your community involvement because you have gotten very active in the Midland community. Uh, and especially in uh, interfaith activities. Talk yes. just very briefly about uh, what you're doing there and, and what that has brought you personally. Sure, so inclusion is another passion that I have and I, I, it flourished with, uh, with DAO. So I got connections through my involvement with the DAO activities. So I, I've been uh, invited to several interfaith uh, uh, events. I had the pleasure to speak at one, at one of the churches in Midland when the uh, shooting of the um, synagogue, the Tree of Life in Pittsburgh. synagogue in, in Pittsburgh. So I, I spoke there because Pittsburgh is very close to Morgantown where West Virginia oh, University. Okay. So I knew people from that, uh, from that area as well. Um, we had several open houses in the masjid. Actually one of them was uh, uh, featured in in the Midland Daily News, and I was on the front page of the Midland Daily News one day. Uh, I participated in uh, an uh, event called Brave New Voices uh, back in May, and it was a great success to promote inclusion in Midland. Uh, so it was I a combination of music and speakers. Music correct? and and speakers. So I was one of the speakers. I did not sing uh, <laughs> because I, I don't have a good good voice to sing. Okay. Uh, but it was pleasant experience, and hopefully it will happen again uh, more often in the future. Well, I know your mom is very proud of her baby son. And Thank so you. <laughs> continued success in your community involvement, continued success in your uh, ERG work uh, at, a, at a major corporation, because this is all really important stuff. I will try my best, and I hope uh, the, the connections stay um, strong between us so I can always keep you posted on the activities. We'll love to hear you checking in from time to time. Excellent. Rahif, thanks so much for coming. Thank you for having me. You bet. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. If you're watching us on TV, stay tuned for our following segments on language and culture. If you're watching Feel Like You Belong on the Internet, we hope you will share your feedback with us via our website and YouTube channel. And be sure to catch our many other stories about the intrepid immigrants who contribute their vision and skills that make these United States a more vibrant price.